Luke chapter 16, Luke chapter 16, and uh, he said unto his disciples, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, there was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him uh, that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? My, uh, for my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig, I, to beg I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him, and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, An hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. Then said he to another, And how much owest thou? And he said, An hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, and write four score. In other words, write eighty. And the Lord commended the unjust steward, because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous uh, mammon, in other words, with money, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if ye uh, have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one, and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. In other words, God and riches, God and money. And the Pharisees also, who, bear covet who were covetous, the Pharisees were a proud, self-righteous sort of a mob, and they, uh, who, they were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were at two John. Since that time the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presseth into it. It is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. Whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another committeth adultery. And whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores. And desiring to be fed of the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died, and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. In other words, into heaven, we would call it. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence or from there. 
And he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them. Lest they also come into this place of torment. And Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. In other words, they have the word of God. And this is what I'm seeking to preach unto you this afternoon, the word of the living God. That you would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour. And not finish up dying and going down to hell. There's absolutely no need for that, my friend. God does not want you to end up in hell. In the lake of fire for all of eternity where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. There's absolutely no need, my friend. You can be saved by the grace of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. All we need to do is this, come in repentance toward God. That is, a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. And then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. So this man, this rich man, was really concerned. Because he didn't want his relations coming to that same place that he was in. That terrible place called hell. That God does not want you to go down to, my friend. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. As I said, repentance is a change of mind. Simply come to God, agree with Him, yes, I realize that I'm a sinner. And then what you need to do is put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And as He said, Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. You need to take heed unto the word of God, my friend. When the word of God is preached unto you, you need to take heed to it and get saved. Become a child of God through faith in Jesus Christ. There's no other way of salvation, my friend, apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. We are dead in our trespasses and in our sins, heading down to this terrible place called hell where that rich man ended up. Why did he end up there? It's not because he was rich, but because he did not believe, in our language, on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we need to do to be in heaven, my friend. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Have you believed on the name of the Lord? Are you a child of God, my friend? Have you been born again? into God's family through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, in other words, the word of the living God, the Bible, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. And you know, the most wonderful person, the most important person in the whole universe of God, has risen from among the dead the third day after being crucified on that cross. Yes, he was raised by the power of Almighty God. And your soul needs to be saved, my friend. And this is why I'm here this afternoon. I want you to know forgiveness for your sins so you can be in heaven at the moment of death, my friend. You are headed down to hell, my friend, at the moment of death, if you die without Jesus Christ. But I'm here to tell you there's no other way of salvation apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Neither is there salvation in any other. There is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation, my friend. No one can be in heaven apart from the once-for-all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross. I wonder what have you done with the Lord Jesus Christ? That will determine your eternal destiny, my friend. At the moment of death, our spirit and soul leave our body, and we go out into eternity. We need to think about eternity. Don't just make so much fuss about our bodies, my friend. These bodies are going to de decay. They're going to turn it back into dust. But our spirit and soul will leave our body at the moment of death. Where will you be? Will you be in heaven? The only way you can be there is through faith in the finished work and the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who came down from heaven to die on the cross, be crucified for you and for me, that you and I might be saved, that you and I might receive forgiveness for our sins. And that forgiveness is only possible through the precious shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for us 
and he was buried. And he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Moving on now to Luke chapter 17. Then said he, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, unto the disciples, it is impossible but that offences will come. But woe well unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he cast into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. If he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And the apostles said unto, Lord, unto the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamore tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. But which of you, having a servant, ploughing or feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by, when he has come from the field, go and sit down to me? And will not rather say unto him, Make ready, wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself and serve me, till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he thank that servant be, uh, because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Well, these lepers were very wise. They came to the right person, my friend. They came to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you this afternoon, the Lord Jesus Christ is the only one whereby we can have everlasting life, through faith alone in him. We've got to put our faith in Him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you can be saved, my friend, this afternoon. This is what God wants for you. The salvation of the Lord is offered unto you absolutely free of charge. We must understand it costs God everything to supply this eternal redemption, which is through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. You see, He is available for the whole world to be saved. But unfortunately, the whole world will not be saved. I wonder, will you be saved though? You need to make this a personal issue. You need to get right with God in a personal way. Now, you might have relations who are going to heaven. They're Christians. They're saved. They're born again into God's family through faith in Jesus Christ. But you need to be born again, my friend. It's absolutely essential to be in heaven. We won't be in heaven without the new birth. We need to be born again into God's family through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So here there were two men, they were lepers, which stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. But one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. He wasn't even a Jew. He was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save or except this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. You notice that? Thy faith hath made thee whole. You've got to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You see, we can either receive Christ as our Saviour or we can reject Him. But let me remind you, my friend, if you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be in hell at the 
moment of death. God does not want that for you, my friend. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world. We've already condemned ourselves by our sinful behaviour and by our sinful nature, my friend. We have a sinful nature that calls us to want to sin and disobey the Lord, break the commandments of the Lord, and thereby finish up in hell because we have not received Christ as our Saviour. And therefore, He'll be our judge. You must make that decision, my friend. Salvation or damnation? Saviour or judge? It's up to you. You determine your eternal destiny, my friend. And it all depends what you do with the person of Jesus Christ. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. And here's the reason. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So we've got to come by faith and put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. We won't be in heaven apart from faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ has done the work upon the cross that no one else could do, my friend. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He's a living, loving saviour, my friend. He desires to save your soul. There's no need to die and go down to hell. God wants you to be in heaven. But the only way you can be in heaven is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend, and receive forgiveness for your sins, everlasting life, peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the Word of God says, Romans 5.1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the way of peace, my friend, is through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Do you have the Son of God? Have you believed on Him for your eternal salvation? And when He was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, He answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo he there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said unto his disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see uh, one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they say, uh, shall say to you, See here, or see there. Go not after them, nor follow them. And this will take place in the seven-year tribulation period, my friend. Whereas the lightning that uh, lighteneth out of the one part under heaven, shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And it was in the days, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days uh, of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. And this is what happened, and why did that happen in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah? It was because of sodomy, my friend. And these things are very prevalent in this day and age that we live. Sodomy is on the, in on the increase, my friend. I'm against it because God is against it. It's unnatural. It's not right. It's sin in the sight of the Lord. Same as adultery, fornication, drunkenness. All these things are sin, my friend. And you and I need to understand, because we are sinners... We are heading down to hell because of our sins that have not been forgiven. But I'm here to tell you this afternoon, your sins can be forgiven. And that is exactly why I'm here this afternoon. So that you might understand that God has made the way of escape through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who desires to be your Saviour this afternoon. 
It says here, uh, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall uh, be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. She turned into a pillar of salt because she looked back. She was desiring the things that were in Sodom at that particular time. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed. Uh, the one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two men shall be grinding. Sorry, two women shall be grinding. Uh, together, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, whither or thither or there will the eagles be gathered together. Moving on now to Luke chapter 18. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Saying there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this uh, widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continually, uh, continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God, God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he be along with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican or tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. This is a self-righteous sort of a man. Notice he's praying with himself. So he's not praying to God at all. He's doing it all wrong. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Even as this tax collector, the tax collectors of that day were very despised. I guess they're still despised uh, in this day and age that we live as well. I fast twice in a week, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off, here's the difference. The publican stood afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes under heaven. He thought he wasn't worthy even to look up to heaven. Such was his humility, his humbleness of mind before the Lord, but smote upon his breast, so hit his chest, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He is a man and he is in the right condition. God can save a man, woman, boy or girl like that, who realizes their sinful condition before him. This is what we've got to understand. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 